on the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck to say, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop in one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome into the latest edition of Floor is Yours, an extension of Five on the Floor that starts on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. This is actually a combination episode of Five on the Floor and Floor is Yours because I'm here. So I'm representing Five on the Floor, and actually Alex Toledo is producing this uh, bleep show tonight. So he is responsible for all of it. I want to tell you about two great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network and of Five on the Floor and Floor is Yours before we get to today's docket and the other hosts on this program. The first one, of course, is Prize Picks. Use the code 5 F I V E. Now, again, you cannot play it currently in the state of Florida because it's a fascist state. But if you use the code 5 F I V E, you can use it in 31 other states. We know a lot of Heat fans and NBA fans that follow us are outside the state of Florida. You can still sign up with the code 5. We're hoping Prize Picks makes it back in Florida eventually. But for right now, get that initial deposit matched up to $100. We're also sponsored by our friends over at Water Cleanup of Florida. You can find them at WCU fl.com that's wcufl.com your one stop excuse me water and mold cleanup shop get the leak detection they'll go over to your place before you have a problem before you got to deal with the insurance companies they're based in boca raton michael robert and his team they got more than 75 five-star reviews on google they're expanding for a reason and they're good honest people and they service all three counties down here in south florida so check them out water cleanup of florida wcufl.com i'll do this for greg if you've got the schmutz They've got the guts. All right, I'm going to introduce everybody here with the floor plan. Again, I'm Ethan Skolnick. Follow me, Ethan J. Skolnick at Five Reasons Sports. We got Brian Fonseca. You can follow him at, at Brian Fonseca NY. That's with a Y in it. We got Tony Schwartz, Tony Schwartz NBA. And of course, we got our guy Timothy Bain, our Bahamian correspondent. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, follow him at Tim A with uh, three A's, a Y, an underscore, an exclamation point, a dollar sign, and all that kind of good stuff. And now I'm getting the heck out of the way. Brian. It's your show. Go. Okay. So we're going to get into these playing races. Um, I do want to, we should actually, Alex, could you pull up a couple of the comments that went off before we got started here? Um, because they were funny. Uh, they're hardly ever start on time. Yes. Tiff, we were three minutes late. Don't worry about it. We're good. Uh, thank you for being here as always. Welch says Ethan busy eating Papa John's. That's why he's late folks. Wait, wait before you go on, you know, the inside joke on that, right? No. Well, that's There's a playback a pop- thing. Pop Papa John's is the worst pizza in, in America. It is in recorded history. It is. I won't eat that trash under yeah. any circumstances. I know you're from New York, uh, so obviously there's a different sensibility on this. But again, you, I was you are there. too. By I, the I way, know, I and, I, and I'm just I'm just saying. I like uh, give me Domino's, give me Little Caesars, give me any literally anything. Pizza mm-hmm. Hut, Papa John's is disgusting. It's the worst thing that the Miami Heat do. They should throw all of it into the bay. Continue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Their their wings aren't terrible. They're not great, but they're not terrible. I'll say that. Um. All right. And there was another comment. Uh, Trap, actually, we'll, we'll start here. Trap leads us into it. Ingram won't play against the Heat uh, tomorrow. Now, Um. we'll start there because the Orlando Magic uh, are beating the Pelicans right now. And it looks like that's going to be a W. New Orleans is doing the back-to-back Florida trip. They're playing Miami tomorrow. And Brandon Ingram, if you saw the game, will probably not play tomorrow because that did not look great. Hopefully, uh, all the best to him. But the play-in race is getting very interesting now, boys. We have just a shit show in the Eastern Conference, which is where we're going to start. Um, the Magic, with this win, will basically be tied with the Knicks. And the Knicks may lose to the Nuggets, probably will lose to the Nuggets in Denver tonight. So the Magic may be fourth by the end of the night, by the time people are hearing this. Um, And I thought they were going to tail off a bit. But, you know, the Eastern Conference, their schedule is very weak. Where are we at right now? Because, uh, Tony, we'll start with you. Knicks, Magic, Pacers, Heat, Mm -hmm. 76ers, as of when we're talking about this now, separated by hardly more than three games. And we have roughly 14, 15, 13-ish games left. 
Yeah, OG Ananobi keeps slipping, keeps missing more and more time. Uh, the Magic continue to click, stamp their way further and further up. Pacers are what they are. And the Heat and the 76ers are, are having a race for who can be uh, a half a game better with the same record each week. So we're going to find out how this all plays out. Meanwhile, the Bulls and the Hawks are having their own little uh, piss poor team off down at the ninth and the tenth spot. So I'm just glad I don't have to pay attention to more than four teams right now each night and all these seedings. But, I, you know, it's we talked about a little bit the Magic's insanely easy schedule, and it is, but as we found out, uh, as Miami fans against Detroit, you know, it's just it's not easy to win basketball games, especially on back to backs and and in condensed time frames and on the road. Like you have to find ways to to nut up and, and uh, continue to change your formula every night and, and play professionals and win basketball games. And shout out to the Magic who are just continuing to grind out wins night after night. Uh, their team has finally found that continuity that they needed to. To, to squeak out wins, right? They were always finding ways to lose games and they're finding ways to win games, especially down the stretch. Um, but the Knicks, the Knicks are, are in a rough spot. I, I think that, you know, as they get closer and closer with the Magic here, they're kind of battling for four and five, but I think those two teams have that solidified. And now it's all about who's going to get six. Uh, the 76ers are too injured, I think, to even make a play at this. So it's, it's Heat, Pacers, uh, going to war, not with each other, but with everybody else in the, the Eastern Conference. And, and how is it all going to shake out? It's fun. I think it's the same kind of thing that's happening in the West right now, except both of those teams have uh, almost as, you know, they're, I think the Lakers are 37, Warriors have 36 wins. Uh, and then the Magics and the Sun both, or the Mavericks and the Sun both have 40. So it's battles everywhere, man. I don't know how it shakes out, but it's fun. We'll get to the West in a second. Uh, Timmy, we'll go to you next. Um, what do you what do you make of this race in the Eastern Conference right now? Especially when I tell you that after the Celtics and the Nuggets, which is interesting, the Heat have the easiest schedule left in the NBA in terms of winning percentage. People will roll their eyes at that because it doesn't matter. And Ethan, you said this on a recent five on the floor. If they're playing uh, the Denver Nuggets, if they're playing a, a JUCO, a high school, it's going to be a clutch game. Like it's just going to come down to the last two minutes. And Eric Spolster, Eric Spolster will say this beauty in the struggle. And you know what? He's right about that. Timmy. Play and race. What are your thoughts? Uh, at this point, there's a war of attrition when it comes to having bodies because it's like every day, like, you know, we we got Jimmy back. Oh, no, Obama's out. Now I think Obama's maybe back tomorrow, and I'm just half expecting someone else to sit out. You know, it's just – um, and you said it best. Every game is going to be um a clutch game. I just accepted that. It's just basically going to be stay close. Maybe Jimmy and Terry save you or you don't. Um, there was a point in the season that I thought that, you know, the Heat will actually win the division. Obviously, he, de he deserves that extension. Um, and yep. and, and the, the, the issue has for, for the last two or three years has been they have great forwards, but they have all these guards that can't do anything. And now everything each guard was good at and got drafted for, they're doing excellently. And it's now clicking like Suggs. Is a, is a beast on defense, you know. I don't even know if Fultz is back. They have Gary Harris, who really started, who hasn't played a full season, like, ever, really doing stuff. You have Anthony Black, who who is more known for the memes now than his actual game, but the, the, that boy good. Um, So I – and, and yes, um, I just think the Magic are just um, – I don't know if – someone like to say this, the big heat, the big three curse – um, maybe the, the the magic just stick together um, health wise, but at this point, just get. I would really like for the Heat to not have to go to the play in again, but I just don't foresee it. Um, something to keep an eye on too. Um, for, for and I, um with Halliburton, it seems as if every game he gets hurt again. Like Halliburton goes to the bench, gets back. So I don't know how much longer his body can hold. Like I still think he came back maybe two weeks too early. To be able to play in the All Star game that they hosted and the Mesha Siakam, I think he should have speeded out a bit more because he has not looked like himself since he came back. And it's like every single night is getting worse and worse. Like I, I don't know if he's gassed, if he's had an injury. So I do think that he can put some games together and surpass the paces. Um, I know Embiid is back in practice, and who knows if he comes back, what he looks like, and um, what's going on over there. And the Bulls and like and like Tony said, the Bulls and the Hawks are so unserious. Like they're gonna stay down there. So it's really, and I don't even think the we, we, Magic are now surpassed us in this regular season format of watching like the seedings. Like, so I think it's just really the paces, the Heat and the Sixers. 
and I don't know who I could, who I could trust. I mean, I could yeah. trust Jimmy. I could trust Jimmy, but for which games will he actually play? Mm-hmm. Ethan, I'm going to throw this to you. So in terms of strength of schedule, again, he mm-hmm. third easiest. Orlando coming out of the all-star break had the easiest schedule left. They now have, right now at the moment, the 14th toughest schedule left. So now they're in the middle of the road because they've played a lot of easy games. They have two games against the Bucks remaining. They have a game against the Clippers remaining. They have Golden State. So they have some not so easy ones coming up. They have one against Chicago, which is going to be very interesting to see how Chicago approaches that one. Pacers are 12th in terms of toughest schedule, and they still have games against Oklahoma City. Um, they still have games against the Clippers, the Cavs, the Heat also are going to see them once, uh, and the Lakers a couple different times. So in looking at sort of this race, and I do agree with Tony, whose camera's malfunctioning right now. Yeah, I'm fixing it. Taking some time. Um, so, oh, Philly, I don't think is, while they did beat the Heat recently, I don't think, like, I think they're destined to make the play in, and I don't really trust Indiana. And I was mm-hmm. saying that the Heat will get to five. Now I feel like it'll probably be six, which some of you may actually prefer, being that that might be mm-hmm. Cleveland. What do you make of this entire race so far and how it's shaking out and how it may shake out? I mean, I want to read you something here first. I'm looking at the Orlando Magic games played this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Paolo has played 67. Franz yep. has played 61. Mm-hmm. Jalen Suggs has played 62. Mm-hmm. Colin Anthony's played 68. Yes, Wendell Carter Jr. missed time, but Mo Wagner, who I think has played well uh, in his role, has played 67. Uh, Anthony Black, a rookie, has played 62. I don't think anybody on the Heat has played six, more than 60 games. I think it's Duncan at 61, and now he's going to miss time. I mean, so much of this is just about being on the court. Like, I, I you know, and, and it, it's frustrating, but that's what these regular seasons have come down to. I mean, this mentioned by Donut Dan here in the comments that the Magic are this year's Kings. The Kings had a good year this year. They had a great year last year because they were the healthiest mm-hmm. team in the NBA. Um, if teams are not taking the regular season seriously or they're not able to keep their guys on the court, they're going to slip back. Now, with that being said, Cleveland is beat up as bad as the Heat right now. They've got Struess out still, and that's indefinite. Uh, Mitchell sounds like he's basically you know, winding down for the playoffs at this stage. That feels like a Jimmy thing uh, where he's not really. Mobley is still out, um, so they've, they've been beat up too. Philadelphia obviously has been without Embiid. Uh, Indiana, you mentioned they've been healthy, but Halliburton has worn down. Like if you look at the three point shooting from him, it's fallen off a cliff. And so much of what they do is, is it's just all him. It's like, it's like the old Nash teams, the old Jason Kidd teams. Um, so I, again, I, you know, Timmy says, I don't know who I can trust. And that's true of the heat rotation right now. It's also true of these teams. I, I just think you're looking at the East and, and I think there are a few things that have emerged. Obviously Boston's the class of it. Milwaukee can score with anybody. I don't know that they've really fixed the leaky defense and Middleton and Brooke Lopez. I don't trust like I used to trust. So, you you know, I I don't think I think they're going to have problems starting Beasley in the playoffs. And and if that's what they're going to end up doing, I I think they're they're not as formidable. And Giannis's health is, has been a bit of an issue this year. Um, So I I just think you look at it and you say, okay, uh, what do you try? Well, the Knicks defense, I trust. And, and clearly he's built an identity there, Tibbs has. But, I mean, he's basically running Josh Hart into the ground right now. Adenobi yep. came back, it seems like, too soon, wasn't completely healthy. Randall, they don't know uh, exactly when he's going to be back. And there's him being pain tolerance. He's trying to fight through it. And then Mitchell Robinson says he's going to be back, but they've kind of started playing one way with Hartenstein. So I, I just think it, 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 this, this is the thing about it, okay? I want to make people care about the regular season. I do. It's what we do. We do podcasts off 82 games and every off day. It's hard to make people care when, A, it doesn't seem like the Heat care, and, B, it doesn't seem like it matters because it, it just feels like they're going to probably find their way into the six seeds somehow. OK, at the very end of this, or we're going to be lamenting that loss to Washington and they missed by one game. They're going to find their way into the six seed somehow and they're going to line up against a beaten up Cleveland team. And we're going to think they're going to win that series because <laughs> Cleveland didn't prove anything in the playoffs last year against New York. And they're virtually the same team with the exception of Struess. And they've been hurt, too, so you don't know who's going to be in what condition by the time they get to it. And I'll take Eric Spolster over J.B. Bickerstaff in a seven-game series. So 
I, again, we're, it's like trying to make people care about something, but they just, they just, I, I, I don't know. It, it, the heat have kind of made me feel apathetic to this entire process because it, it seems like they don't really give a damn about the regular season, and but yet they're not going to pay for it. I don't think so. I think that's where we're at. Well, in terms of four to eight, the the dangerous teams to me, one, uh, we'll go in order here. I think the Knicks are dangerous because they now feel like a team that is getting or could get healthy at the right Mitchell, time. Mitchell Robinson just practiced two nights ago. Yeah, he right. ain't going to play for a little bit still because they're going to ramp him up or whatever. Yeah. Like that, in the report, it was Tibbs was like, you know, it, it's still going to be a little bit, but yeah, they're ramping him up. Um, we'll see where he's at. He's another one who's kind of injury plagued. There's this OG Ananubi, who, by the way, this is part of the OG Ananubi experience. You know, a lot of people loved him. A lot of people wanted him, and I think he'll become less attractive once he gets that big contract and you have to deal with these injuries. But he's about to miss 30 games or about around 30 games for the third time in four seasons. It was 29 the year after COVID hit. It was 34 the year after that. It was 15 last year, which probably is league average right now for you know a lot of different dudes. And now he's in the mid-20s again, and it's probably going to get to 30 the way this is looking for OG Ananobi. So that's part of the experience of uh, having him there. Good luck on that long-term contract. The Orlando Magic, I think uh, you know they need to get their ass kicked so they'll get into the playoffs and they'll lose in the first round. The Pacers all year, I thought they were full of shit because the offense, offense, offense thing doesn't work uh in the playoffs like i know people look at denver and be like oh what defense did they have they had a top 10 defense for the last i don't know four months of the season and whenever they needed to get a stop doesn't matter who they're playing against they can get a stop they have aaron gordon who's better one of the defense best. now by the way better defense now aaron gordon one of the best and most switchable defenders in the league christian brown could defend peyton watson's going to be a real problem on both ends of the floor but he's already figuring stuff out defensively especially as a young player um, the Pacers are not that. The Pacers are just offense, 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 and Tyrese Halliburton is not the same Tyrese Halliburton as he was early in the year. And then you have Miami and Philly. Philly, I mean, look, Joel Embiid's great. He hasn't been great in the playoffs. He has a meniscus tear that he has to come back from. And when you're seven feet tall coming back from a meniscus tear, 30 years old now, by the way. Um, and let's remember, he played like 33 games his first year in the league, which was three seasons or two seasons after he was drafted because he couldn't play the first two seasons yeah. so like they have a lot of questions here along with the fact that buddy healed no disrespect to me kind of tailed off after his initial hot start with philly uh tyrese maxi you're starting to see some of the inefficiencies there now that he has to have a bigger role and good luck trusting kelly Oubre in a big game and then miami has the experience of at least with them wow you know they're a team among these teams we're talking about could also peak at the right time if they get some guys back namely duncan robinson kevin love we'll see about tyler hero i'm skeptical that he's going to play again this season ethan maybe you can sort of you know talk about that at some point but i think with the heat they have an interesting position here where if they're the six and the Cavs are third they're going to be the sexy pick where betters are going to be like oh we're hammering the heat because most playoff wins most playoff series wins, most finals appearances of the last four years in the Cavs. We saw what happened to them against the Knicks. What's going to happen to a seat to a team who has a similar profile? Like, I think that's going to be advantageous to them to get to six. Whereas if you get to five, you're playing the Knicks. And I don't think you want to see the Knicks in the first round. I think the Knicks would beat the Magic, would beat the Pacers, would beat the Sixers. I think they could beat the Heat. I also think the Heat could beat them, and I think that's probably going to be another long series. But to me, those are the best two teams there. I just don't think that means they're going to finish four and five because of the nature of the regular season. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, so just to finish up on Halliburton really quickly, we did a, a show on December 7th that was heavily geared towards what we liked from the season. At that point, Tyrese Halliburton – was shooting for 41% of his shots from the mid range. Um, and he was like 65 of 159, which is 40% from three. The pull ups is 58% on his mid range pull ups and 52% on his mid range pull up threes on December 9th. Sometimes it's just a make or miss league. And when you make your living on a really, really difficult fucking shot, and that's the majority of your offense night in, night out, because he's mm -hmm. taking like three or four of those shots every night. That's how that goes. <laughs> and then when your star is not healthy and he can't be your lead facilitator night in, night out, the Pacers have a really rough road ahead of them to stay in the sixth seed. Battle well, what's Miami. interesting about that, Tony, is that, you know, Siakam coming in was supposed to lessen the load on him. Yep. 
Um, but it, that hasn't really seemed to happen. And, and that's that's been one of the interesting things about this season to me has been that certain teams, you know, we talk about, OK, get more talent, right? Get more people on the floor. And I even talked about that, you know, on this show. But there are some times where some of this talent doesn't really fit and trying to put these pieces together during a season. And Brian, you mentioned the hero thing. And I just I, I mean, this is this is hanging over the heat like there's no there's no way around it okay and and now duncan being hurt um you know back look the, uh, anthony was a very good reporter from the herald anthony chang reported that he should be back within the week and so this doesn't seem particularly serious but back injuries are i mean that is you just don't want to hear about a back injury because that could mm-hmm. literally flare up at any time so now the heat you have a situation where we were talking about okay let duncan stay in the starting lineup and get comfortable which is finally where i came to after this latest hero absence where tyler's not going to get to 40 games this season okay he's just not he's at 36 right now so like that was where i came to and now you have duncan out of the lineup you're literally starting and we loved having him on the program and he's a great ambassador for the sport and uh he'll be a great coach someday you're literally starting 35 year old Patty Mills, who was not playing in Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, that's your spacer right now. And I, I feel like a lot of teams are kind of going through this, but we've got so many teams where it's okay. When this guy comes back, okay, well, what's that going to look like? Like, yes, Philadelphia obviously wants MB back, but is that going to be seamless? They've been playing a certain way with Maxi for the past six weeks, right? Now you got to bring, you're going to bring Embiid back. You're going to go totally back in that direction. They brought Lowry in since. Tobias has been in and out, in and out of the lineup. Um, you know, obviously, Indiana's had to, to transition with the Siakam stuff. I really think that's the single biggest reason Orlando has gotten to jump on some of these teams. They've just been playing the same people every night. Like mm-hmm. that's that's it. Like this, they're not waiting for somebody to come back and save them. They're not. They're they're not having to deal with these different combinations. Mosley's done a good job with it. And, and I give them credit in one sense, the Magic in particular, for separating themselves because they don't have vets on that roster. And usually these young teams that have drafted a lot in the top 10, which they have, they don't really make this jump until they get a couple of vets in just to plug the holes. They don't really have those players on that team. They've just gotten internal improvement from some of these guards we've talked about, like Suggs and Cole Anthony, et cetera, to pair with Paolo and Franz. So I, I give them credit for them. I don't fear them in a playoff series, though. I just I don't I don't think they're ready. I think they're a lot like Cleveland was last year. And I think that, you know, what was it Jared Allen said? You know, the lights were a little bit too bright. Like I yeah. feel like the magic magic in a playoff series with the heat. And I, that's why I just keep coming back to this. Like, I don't like a lot of things that have gone on with Miami this year. I don't like that you're waiting on Hero to come back healthy. And that again, one guy comes in, it's whack-a-mole, one guy in, one guy out. But then you set them up in a playoff <laughs> series and like I don't like the Knicks matchup for them. Um, and obviously Boston is a challenge and yet nobody else. I don't fear anybody else. I really don't. Yeah. I think everyone, everyone here is playing with fire in their own sort of way. Um, Cause with the Knicks, it's like Julius Randall, maybe coming back at some point, Julius Randall in the playoffs has been an interesting uh, sort of thing mm-hmm. to throw out there. Uh, the Magic are young. The Pacers are, well, their best players, Fried and Siakam. I mean, you know, he's there. Um, the Heat, I mean, they have their own number of issues. Uh, the Tyler Hero thing, I just kind of mentioned it in passing. But, like, I, I, I mentioned this, and we're not going to spend too much time here. We actually should get to the West because Daniel Gafford, who represents the Dallas Mavericks, just left the game with an injury. Um, because you oh, know, no. this is just where we're at at this point. Um, with the Heat in particular, with Tyler Hero in particular, I said weeks ago, I said this to Greg, and I believe I said this to Sean. I was like, This is one of those injuries. I don't know why people think, like, oh, you know, when he comes back, he should just start right away, whatever, and you know, he should come back and play big minutes right away. This is one of those injuries that it's lingering too much, and when injuries linger like this. And it feels like they're getting closer to a return. And it's one of these day-to-day injuries that all of a sudden he's out for a month or whatever it is. You look up one day and it's like, oh, wait, off-season surgery is happening? Or like surgery is happening and then all of a sudden he'll be back, start of a regular season? Like, are we getting closer to that point or is he actually going to come back? Because I think that's something like they, they need to prepare as if he's not going to be back and are they of the mindset that he's not going to be back yet? 
I don't think this is a surgical situation. Um, I mean, I may be wrong about that, but I, I don't get that sense. I think it's a a pain tolerance situation, an aggravation situation, more similar to kind of different body part, obviously, but what Dwayne dealt with with the bone bruise. I remember if that where it was kind of like it just never went away for two years. <laughs> they just tried to manage it. Um, and in this case, you're dealing with an injury where Tyler – is pounding he pounding that foot on the floor every single time he plays. I I just I so I don't think it's going to be okay. All of a sudden he's going to have surgery, but I do understand what you're saying because there is this relationship to like what happened with Josh Richardson, okay? Where you know with Josh it was like okay he made the road trip with the team. I you know I was like whoa I was surprised because I when he first did it I was like I think that's a season ending air injury. I mean separated shoulder etc. You make the road trip. He's working with the team. You're like, okay. And then all of a sudden, like, they're like, nah, this isn't going to work. Like, this is not, he's going to have the surgery. So do I think that Tyler could be shut down? I wouldn't put anything past it at this point. And I, I also am very nervous about taking what they say about Tyler at face value because there are such politics about it that they know what the optics are with the fan base. They've got to be very careful about the way they frame it so that the player doesn't take even more, excuse my pun, heat. And so I, I, whenever they say anything about Tyler, I don't know what to believe. I mean, I initially thought this was a knee injury. Like, that's what I thought he was dealing with. Yeah. Oh, no, no, this is the foot injury from his rookie year. Well, which which foot injury? What What, what is that about? He's had like six injuries since. Um, I just think that's where it's at. And I don't mean to make light of it, but uh, do I expect him to come back and play at a high level this year? I don't. I don't. And it's not disrespect to Tyler. It's just... It's the track record on this. I mean, last year during the final playoffs, we kept hearing mixed messages like, okay, he he wants to play in the finals, but they don't want him to play. No, they want him to play. He doesn't want to play. I literally heard di three different ESPN reporters, credible ESPN reporters, people you see on TV every day, telling me what they had heard about Tyler Hero, and they were three completely different stories. And then I was hearing the fourth, okay? So I, I don't really know what to believe with it. So, but if, if, are my expectations high that he's going to be back playing at a high level as a starter this year? No, it's just no. I just I don't just just not where this is typically gone. And to your point, Ethan, if it goes where it's another 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 playoff run, he doesn't play. Do they finally just trade him? <laughs> I mean, I I the way that they have always framed this is that they're not trying to move him. That teams are asking for him, that they always ask for the third guy. And I do know there was legitimate interest in him this offseason. There was. The story's that out I know about too. having to yeah, yeah. yeah, we both we know that. About, and having to attach a pick him, with him was with garbage. Nets. Yeah. But I, it's I do funny because the Nets that, are the most interesting thing, the most interesting team that I would actually circle back to if I were them. I, I, I think they would be up there for me too. I think Utah, there's a few teams out there. The Nets are certainly one of them. San Antonio is another one. Yeah. Uh but I, I just I, <laughs> um I think his value is probably the lowest it's ever been because of the availability, not because he's a bad basketball player on that because point, of the availability on that point. He has missed 33 games this year and counting. It'll be another one tomorrow, which gives him exactly 70 missed games between this year and last year, 70, including playoffs. It doesn't include the playoffs. No, no that includes playoffs. What I'm, what I'm playoffs. saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 37, okay. 33. And the first three years was 18, 18 and 19. So mm -hmm. you're looking at north of 120. You're looking at about 125 missed games as of this recording uh, over a five-year period, which means he's missing 25 games a year if you're including the playoffs. That's not a little bit. Um, let's, uh, let's get to the Western Conference real quick on the play-in situation, uh, and we will end with questions. So please leave questions, comments, and things of that nature, so we can hit those on the way out. And yes, Kentucky lost. We saw that. Speaking of Tyler, yeah, uh, by the way, Kentucky <laughs> three seed down, brackets busted. I didn't even make a bracket this year. I, I'm making a women's bracket uh, tomorrow. I think I had them in the finals. Uh, so I, I I jinxed them in our better edge bracket. Um, which Kentucky guard are they drafting this year? Rob or are we going to say they should have drafted? Rob yeah. Where's Miles know. Hero go? People want a back play anywhere yet. Um, please don't talk about the Lakers and Warriors like ESPN. No Heat 305. We're going to talk about some of the other teams in the Western play-in. But those are two of the teams that are involved. Um, okay. Four through – this is more like four through ten because you have mm -hmm. the Clippers 
who are barely ahead against the Pelicans, who just lost to the Magic. Yep. And we'll see if they might have lost Brandon Ingram. Yeah, might have lost yeah. Brandon Ingram. They should lose to the Heat tomorrow, but I'm sure that'll be a clutch game. So be careful when yes. you bet on it. Uh, the Kings are six. The Mavericks are seven, and they're playing the Knicks. Uh, no, they're not playing the Knicks. The Nuggets are playing the Knicks. Mavericks are playing somebody right now. I should know that. Luka Doncic is on my fantasy team. I'm forgetting. Uh, the Suns are tied with the Ma- Mavericks as of this recording. The Lakers yep. are ninth. The Warriors are 10. We're not going to do the thing where we're going to say – who can make a deeper run, the Lakers or the Warriors, in the playoffs? Because I don't believe in either of those teams, and neither of them are probably going to win a playoff series. Although, if the Lakers play the Thunder. Um, anyway. Don't start that. Don't start that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm Most, sure that's what's on ESPN right now. Let's uh, let's start with Timmy. Most interesting thing about the Western Conference play-in situation. You have – I don't think the Clippers are going to fall that far into it. But, hey, I mean, they lose some games. You never know. But Clippers are four, Pelicans five, Kings six, Mavs seven, Suns eight, Lakers nine, Warriors ten. It's a mess in the Western Conference as it is in the East. Most interesting thing that stands out to you is what, Timmy? The Suns in eighth. <laughs> um, I don't know what the, what the hell is going on with that team, but – it's still about two mm-hmm. more weeks or so to the playoffs. And I do think, first of all, Grayson Allen is going to get paid. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get paid. More than Max Struess, in my Fact. opinion. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of money. Especially, he's very efficient. He's, he's basically 50 40 90 or like a bit off. Um, I do think that um, <laughs> they're going to be the best team in the play-in. You know, they're going to be ESPN's two favorites, I'm sure. Um, and even though he's never been proven to do anything, I think Bradley Beal can come and win a game, like a play-in game. Sure. Somewhere. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I be out for three weeks, Timmy. Right. Like, he'll give us all, <laughs> and make sure they make the playoffs, and then he'll miss the rest of the season. Um, so I just think, regardless of seeding, the Suns escape the play-in and make the playoffs. Um, I'm very curious um, if Westbrook can come back from that hand injury. Um mm-hmm. That's something I'm, I'm looking at. Um, I feel kind of bad, bad for the, the the Wolves just because I, I've i been saying that I think they need him to go against the Nuggets. Just between Nas and Cat and Gobert, they sound very the best chance of doing something with the Joker. Um, I don't think you guys mentioned it, but Red Velvet is lost for the season. Kevin yeah. Herter is out. Yep. Yeah, he, he, he's, mm-hmm. he's gone. Um, that, he that wasn't kind of, playing that well this year. He, anyway. Right, but he still hurts their death. <laughs> Um, and I'm the Mavericks to lose in the same fashion they always do. Luca puts up numbers and all gets hurt and they get bounced. And you guys just said Don Gaffer was out. So, um, but I, so I'm, I think it's going to be Luca and I, and, and Katie, um, which is great because ESPN has to talk about something else, you know? Right. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really watch and, and Brian knows this. I wanted BI to be a heat, a heater for like three years now. I really hope. Bi avoided serious injury, but that did not look good. Um, so I guess we wait till tomorrow to see what becomes of the Pelicans. But someone is going to, uh, and someone's going to be upset in this first round. Like, um, I could see, I could honestly see, um, Zion like bullying the Clippers. You know, like I could see something scary, crazy happening in the first round. Me too. I, I I would be scared of the Pelicans unless uh, Brandon Ingram is out out. But I mean, they might be fine without him. Uh, Tony, what are your what are your thoughts here on the Western Conference uh, race between four through ten? This potential bloodbath that we're seeing unfold. Well, to Timmy's point, if Brandon Ingram is seriously injured, he's going to fit great in Miami. He's going to do really well. <laughs> uh I think there's only one spot up for grabs for the playoffs, and it's that uh, that fifth or sixth seed, depending on where the Kings stop. Just mm-hmm. nobody's trying to guard seventy to eighty sets of pick and roll night in, night out. The Kings are going to win two more games. They're going to lose one, two, one, two, one. They'll trade that way until the end of the season, and then people remember Sabonis can't shoot more than sixteen feet out, and they'll get eliminated. I think all the teams this year in the West are better than they were last year. Um, they're they're. You know, the Kings are going in with largely the same construction and less shooting. Uh, But they just, just nobody, that two man game that they have is so dangerous. Nobody wants to actually commit to defending it uh, in the regular season. I don't know what their schedule looks like. Maybe they're playing tense games, but they're there to me. The Pelican spot is up to grabs, depending on what Zion Williamson does in response to the Brandon Ingram injury. 
Uh, but yeah, Timmy said the Suns. I like it. I, I could pitch you a Mavs take where I say, hey, uh, Derek Lively wasn't having a great time at first when Daniel Gafford came over. And then he started to figure it out, uh, how to play minutes with him. But pitching Derek Lively back in a spot that he's already familiar with and played a lot of time this season, he's a rookie. Swapping roles for him isn't a fun thing. So now he goes back to the role he played for 50% of the season. Uh, and the maps are, are clicking exactly like they were before because P.J. Washington's still there and is still playing good ball. And I think they have a rotation and a lineup now that's even more solidified and more ready for the playoffs. Um, not having Daniel Gafford is not a good thing, but they can win enough games, I think, to get a playoff spot. That would not surprise me. I, too, think it's the Suns. Bradley Beal gives them just a, a different element towards the end of the season here, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if the Derek Lively experience is good enough to pull the Mavericks into a playoff spot that the New Orleans Pelicans lose. Well says that Gafford's back on the bench for what that's worth. So hopefully not serious. There I don't you go. Brand, there I don't think go. Brandon we talked Ingram, about nothing. I don't think Brandon Ingram made it that far. Look, I love the maps too, but I'll get into that in a second. Ethan, what stands out to you here? I mean, on the overall of the Western Conference, what's fascinating to me is that we've got a lot of teams with like single or two stars, but very flawed rosters around them. And I'll take Denver and you take the field. Same. I, I just, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we, we I, I, I could talk myself into a Luka run. I could talk myself into Kawhi if Paul George remembers how to play basketball. I could, I could talk myself into uh, even Durant, honestly, uh, at this stage, although it's, it's the, the evidence is starting to mount against KD since the Warriors experience that he just can't carry these teams. And I, you know, I, I don't know if it's an indictment of him as a player or a leader or what, but it's, it's not, it doesn't materialize the way it's supposed to materialize. But I just, then I watch the nuggets and I'm just like, who's beating them? Like, seriously, like, if if you looked at uh, you know Minnesota went totally healthy, I guess if Towns, you know, was in there, I agree with Timmy that maybe they have the bigs to to fight them on a little bit, and that Anthony Edwards would force Denver to make some decisions defensively that they don't necessarily want to have to make. Uh, I could have been talked into that, but without Towns healthy and not knowing about his availability going forward, it's hard to go there. You know, the Pelicans, again, were on a run, but it seems like every time they get on a run, they get sidelined by somebody's injury, and it looks like that happened tonight. Uh, Dallas, I, I mean, I, I don't know. what, what When Kyrie starts eating again, what does that look like? I, I, just, I just I don't trust. I mean, I know, Brian, you and I both both don't really trust him. I, I don't yeah. trust the Jason Kidd coach team. I don't, to stay consistent um, and to win a series like that. I mean, the Clippers are probably the team that jumps out the most to me simply because I, I do trust Ty Lue in a playoff series. And Kawhi can be the best player on the floor literally against anybody. Okay. Um, but I again I, I don't I don't know if they all stay healthy and it always seems like they implode. So I just I, I know that the NBA doesn't necessarily want this story, but to me the Nuggets are better than last year. Like I, you know, we, we talked about their eight man. They only played eight last year uh, when it mattered, and they lost two of them. But Peyton Watson's better than Bruce Brown right now, I think, because he just mm -hmm. gives them. I like Bruce Brown, but Peyton Watson gives them more length and defensively. Like it's like they can switch everything. They can switch everything on defense, and they have a guy who makes the game better for everybody else. And as long as that guy is healthy and not on a horse, I, I just I don't I just don't know who's beating them. And I can tell you the team in the East is not. I, I, I would take the Nuggets all day long against Boston. All day long. And we know Miami would lose that series like ten to minus two in games. Like there's I, I there's there's no chance the Heat could get two games off the Nuggets. I just I don't see it. They they don't they're not constructed to beat that team. And I and Honestly, I don't think Boston is either. So I, 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 you know, we can talk, we can talk about everything else, but I, I just, I think we're just looking at a Denver repeat. I think that's where we're at. Yeah. I want to have a larger Boston discussion leading up to the playoffs because I, I am zagging on them when everybody else is zigging and doing the whole mm. Boston's going to win the title thing again. We could get, we could get on that. Uh, time. Ye old the Brian Fonseca. That is the I mean, hashtag Simmons Brian is, Fonseca. Well, I mean, Simmons is doing a documentary. That's the if there's no if that's if there's a kiss of death, that's it. Like I there's no <laughs> no chance. I mean, I love our guy Alf uh, tweeting out, you know, what was it? it, it were any of those championships at HD? Um, you know, that they've had 
<laughs> no, <There's>... actually, <laughs> I don't even think 2008. <laughs> Listen, they've no. got one. They got one title. They're on VHS, basically. Data. One yeah. title since 1986, something like that. 1987, yeah. almost 40 years. Like that's an entire yeah. like generation, multiple yeah. generations of people. You know what I mean? Like their last title barely came before like hip hop was invented. Before the yeah. you guys remember, you guys remember when HD first came out and it wasn't even high definition. It was just sidebars yes. that said ESPN and it tightened the screen up to make the resolution higher. Yeah, the Celtics are waiting that. for AOL. The Celtics are waiting for AOL to load. Basically, yeah, like as as that loads, they'll win another championship. So on the West, we, we've quick. been subjected yeah. to like six different podcast hosts from that team. Seriously, like <laughs> from that team, it, it's the greatest championship in NBA history. According oh, yeah, to yeah, we we need the only more. one that matters. We need more, more athlete content, more. You know, I I'm uh, so I, glad I'm so glad <laughs> LeBron James and JJ Redick are doing the show because I know they need the exposure as as aspiring on air talents to. To oh, just man. to just add but, other right, jobs I, I to their resume. I at least appreciate I'm what sure. they're trying to do, even though it was completely staged by the fact that JJ said none of that content is out there. Thankfully, JJ credited Brady Hawk while he did that. But then all of a sudden, you don't think that he had that show in development with LeBron already, like uninterrupted through Maverick when he yeah, made course. that comment. And then, and then of course, the only thing that gets pulled from it is Buker, who I used to work with. I like Rick, but like. He pulled the thing about LeBron saying he's the chosen one, which has been Rick Stick here for 20 years. Like, literally, that's what they got out of that podcast. Like, the two of them are breaking down, like, floppy action and all the rest of this stuff and inbounds passes. And they're breaking down LeBron like a passing reference saying he's the chosen one. There's, we, we just can't have nice things, basically. That's, well, that's well, where this is at. Well, here, but JJ Reddick understands, like, that's the game that's going to happen. Like, yes, you can do, you can do the shows, like, this is this is a, a a newer version of detail. I don't know if people remember that right. or know that. Like mm -hmm. that's basically what this is, and it's like, oh, we're gonna prove that you know we're the guys who can make film content cool. And it's like you're LeBron James and JJ Reddick. People are gonna tune in because it's LeBron James and JJ Reddick mm -hmm. if they tune in. And then a lot of people right. are not going to because they probably don't want to be that into weeds because they don't have time for that shit. You know what I mean? But ultimately, you know, it's just we we could. There's a there's a big extrapolation of this discussion we could have that I would love to have, but we don't have time for that shit. Um, on the Western Conference, real quick, uh, we have the Clippers at four. Um, all season long, I I don't know, I don't understand why. Like, we we just decided to give the title to the Clippers a couple months ago. I was the person, as Tony said, like I was doing what I do, and I was like, hey, why why does everyone have a boner for the Clippers right now? Because they're tearing through the regular season. It's January. Who wins the title in January? I don't know. Lakers. That. Right. <laughs> well, they did it before that's January. True. You should have ended the show on that. I think that's, they did actually, it before that's perfect. But that's what happened. And it's like, we, I've seen James Harden's movies before. I've seen him in the playoffs. Paul George, I've seen you hit the side of the backboard in the playoffs. Yes, I'm going to hold that against you, even though you had a pretty nice playoff run after that. Kawhi Leonard, you're going to stay healthy the whole time. Russell Westbrook, they're sneaky missing him because he's sneaky important, but I don't trust him in a big game either. And oh, by the way, if you play the Pelicans, I, I, I think the Pelicans could potentially win that series because I've seen the Pelicans sun you on your own home court earlier this season. Um, I think the Clippers are good. They're talented. They're not beating Denver. If they come across Denver, uh, they're out. Pelicans, I think they can make a run. I think they're dangerous. I think they're deep. I don't think they're going to go beyond maybe the second round of the playoffs. Maybe the Western Conference Finals if things break right, but things didn't seemingly break right for Brandon Ingram tonight. We'll see how that goes. The Kings, I mean, Pacers, West, um, I don't think they're going to win a playoff series at all. Uh, if they play against Minnesota, uh, maybe you could talk me into it because I still think Rudy Gobert is one of the most overrated players in the league. And we're going to give him defensive player of the year again. And then we're going to watch what happens in the playoffs. And I'll shut up if they make it to the finals, but I don't trust that dude at all. They don't have Carl Anthony Towns. We'll see how important that is. I think Anthony Edwards is going to be a superstar. That dude is going to be really, really good. But we'll see because I don't trust that organization at all. The Mavericks, I actually think they're sneaky, dangerous, can make a run. And if you want to tell me Luka Doncic is the second best player in the Western Conference after uh, Nikola Jokic, I'm listening. I'm at least listening. Uh, Kyrie Irving, don't really trust him that much, but I give him credit. He's been quiet this year. You know, he's he's been fine. <laughs> he's, he's just playing ball. Uh, Dallas reporters haven't said that, haven't indicated that bad things have been happening. Kyrie things have been happening. So he's just kind of hooping. 
the injuries have sort of surfaced, and that's sort of the sneaky underrated thing about the Kyrie Irving experience is that he gets hurt a lot, but he's been good when he plays. And I think none of the top tier teams in terms of record in the Western Conference would want to see him. If the Mavericks play the Timberwolves, I think that would be an interesting first round matchup. That's actually something that's possible given the standings. And I think some people would be like, mm, you know, kind of like Luca in that situation. But we'll see. Of uh, the Suns, they're just not a complete team. And this is what happens when you go all in and you have new owner syndrome. Mm -hmm. So bring it back to Bill Simmons. New owner syndrome where you have a guy go gung ho about putting together a big three, not having a depth, don't really care about uh anything on their roster outside of the top three guys that's sort of how they're looking at this it's like we'll get kevin durant bradley peel and devin booker and we'll figure it out and they haven't figured it out we'll see what happens there the lakers let's be serious and the warriors i don't think they have enough so that's where we're kind of at i like dallas <laughs> kind of the most to make a deep run out of that group because i think luka Doncic is scary i like what they did to the trade deadline and i think they could surprise some teams and they do have a Western Conference Finals trip in their back pocket from a couple of years ago. Um, I sneaky like New Orleans, and I think the Clippers are good. But, man, their injuries, we'll see, because they're those guys have been healthy all year, uh, the big three in that organization, and we'll see if that lasts. But I do think Tyron Lue is a great coach, and he's somebody I trust more than most other coaches in the Western Conference. Um, all right. Do we have uh, comments, questions, whatever to end the show? Send them now because we've already gone for 45. So leave comments, leave questions. Where are we going, Alex? Bunch of stuff. Bring them in because we're going to tackle. We're going to tackle a few of these before we get out of here. Well, says burn every asset and require <laughs> acquired a no trade clause. Brilliant work. That's why I didn't understand all the crying about, oh, though he should have got Bradley ah, Beal. There we go. You here know, yep. I, I didn't understand that. Like, I... I thought they should I mean, have. As, 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 to, as soon as Bartlesteen said no on the no trade clause, Pat said, okay, that's it. I mean, it, it never even got to heat ownership. Like that, that report was wrong. Like it never, it never even got to the Arisons because Pat was like, I'm not taking a guy with a no trade clause. The heat, if you haven't learned something about the heat by now, is you, Pat Riley's not going to allow himself to be boxed into a corner. Like that's just, this is not going to happen. It, it goes back to, you remember the Stoudemire signing with the Knicks in 2010 mm. when Bosch yeah. ended up signing with Miami? Well, a big a big sticking point there was the Knicks gave uh, uh, signed Amari without any protections on his injuries, mm -hmm. and that Guaranteed came back to five bite them. years. Right, that came back to bite them. Now Amari was great when he first got there, but it didn't last very long. And the Heat ended up getting him anyway. A few years later, when he was past his prime, but like CJK six twenty two, nobody puts Riley in a corner. Uh, he, he wasn't going to accept the no trade clause. So that was basically it. And Bartlestein was always sending him to his son anyway in Phoenix. So that, that's where that was headed. So Donut Dan question with Team USA getting seated with Serbia. This is Olympic talk, folks. This is my bag right here. Do you think that basically locks Bam into an Olympic spot? Um, Already locked, buddy. I will say this. I'm not going to go too in on the groups because I'm going to have all spring and summer to get into this. But USA, Serbia, South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Ooh. They're not, they're, they're pretty dangerous. And the winner of a Olympic qualifying group, which will be like Lithuania, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Italy are the main teams in that. Lithuania is probably going to win that as Puerto Rican. Like I'm going to, mm -hmm. like Lithuania is probably going to win that. So yeah, uh, you might see Nikola Jokic. You might see Nikola Jovic. You might see Jonas Valanciunas. So um, Team USA will need Bam. I don't know if he's going to play. I think he probably wants to, Ethan. Does he want to repeat run it back? But he's it, playing. He's yeah, playing. He, yeah. I, I, he's if, he, if, he, if, if he's invited, he's playing. I, I think that to me, that's a, a no brainer. I mean, look, Bam, you know, Bam wants the accolades. He wants uh, that stuff. He feels, uh, you know, that he's been overlooked for some of this. And you're talking about going on a stage and playing, being on a team with Steph Curry and LeBron James and the rest of them. I mean, that. You know that you're stamped at that point. Like other than a championship, like that's winning a gold medal with that group would be the thing. And we know that Embiid won't get for through the first two games, so Bam's going to end up being the starter the rest of the way. So that and, and you can make an argument. You don't know if Embiid's going to make it. Suited. Well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> well, that's the other thing though. You can also you can always make the case too that Bam is better suited for Olympic play than Embiid is actually, um, just is. in terms of what that team needs, right? Like what they they don't need. 
uh, as great as Embiid is, you don't need some of what he provides. You need what Bam provides. That's that's uh, he, he's a perfect Olympic center, honestly. So yeah, he 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 will he will be invited and he will play. That's my expectation. He's got the respect of the coaching staff. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, this is question of the year. Mm-hmm. Respect to the coaching <laughs> staff. I'll get to it in a second. Leave it up uh, there, Alex. He has he has the continuity. Uh, that I think is is required in these things, and I, and that's why that's why I believe we're going to see Jalen Brunson again, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, more Brunson, important, we should see Anthony him. Edwards. And and for the same reason that you said Anthony Edwards, he just loves this shit. Uh, when he came right. back with his first gold medal, he brought that thing with him to summer league. It's one of my my happiest moments ever. Is I got a picture with Bam in a parking lot. At 12 mm-hmm. o'clock at night after summer league games in Vegas. And you know what he had in his fucking neck there in Vegas? Gold medal. The gold medal. <laughs> the gold medal. He, he loves this I, stuff. I, I, no, but but I, I gave you even better. Bam, actually, I was there when they, they he didn't have a pass to get in. Because the way that it works in Vegas is you've got the main entrance, oh. but you got Thomas and Mac on one side, and you got Cox Pavilion yeah. on the other side. They weren't letting Bam in, but he had he didn't have a pass, but he did have his whole middle with him. So yes, he's ca- he's carrying it. I saw Chris Bosch not like, get let in to the the Cox. But actually, I was sitting uh, just aside here because I don't really want to answer this question that just came in. Uh, I, I was actually <laughs> sitting at, at Cox Pavilion, the smaller of the two buildings behind the basket, next to a couple of other reporters. I think McManaman and a couple of others. And Sam Hinkie was sitting there and he did not have his pass and they kicked him out because he didn't look like he belonged there, which actually based on Sam Hinkie's uh, you know, career as general manager of the Philadelphia 76ers was probably true. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty tight there. So, so that's the thing when you, when you win a gold medal, bring it to Las Vegas. So they'll actually let you in to watch summer leaguers play. All right. Do we have to answer this question. No, we don't have to. Do um, the answer is Ethan upgrades his internet. Um, Ven, <laughs> can we put can we put that one up, Alex? Uh, Ven's question: Who arrived late? Daniel Gaffer, by the way, starting the second half. Demar Derozan ejected. He got a flake or two, which is bullshit. He's on Ooh. my fantasy team, and I'm in the fantasy championship. I need Demar Derozan, so thank you for that, officials. God save um, you, Brian. Dylan Brooks also got ejected. Um, then late to the show, question for one of you: What's a seven man rotation in the playoffs? Consider Tyler healthy. It could be eight. I also, I think it could It'll be, be eight. nine. It'll be nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. Okay. So a playoff rotation. If if Tyler consider Tyler healthy, I I don't think you could consider Tyler healthy at this point. Is my cop out answer to that? Uh, we can I, make the playoff here, rotation. Here, if here, like here's, here's my here's my best guess. If everybody's healthy, okay. Um. I think it does start with the lineup we've seen recently. I think at this point it would be Rozier, Robinson, Butler, Jovich, because of his improvement on defense. Yes. Uh, as a short minute starter and uh and bam. Mm-hmm. And I think your bench is Love, Martin, Hawk is hero. I agree. Which, by the I, way, is by I, the way, is the best bench in the league. Uh but We'll never see it because it's never going to be completely healthy. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> I think the more interesting question is actually at Ethan Men- or uh, Duncan Robinson, not Orlando. Um, no. I, I I pretty much agree, but I would ask this: What's this is the most interesting, the more interesting question to me, and I think everybody should answer. If Hero's out, because I actually think Love will be back. Hero, I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Hero's out, who's absorbing those minutes other than? Eddie. Like, it, is is it just it's, Patty Mills because of what we're it's, seeing? It's now? just I say I say this with my confidence, right? Ethan might have a whole different answer. Shut me up, but I mean, at this point, if Tyler comes back, the only thing that he can really provide this team is, is you know, to be more dynamic is shooting. I think Terry has filled a a, a good niche for himself, and and I think Duncan yeah, kind of fits I, I, really well next to him. I played the long personally. I think you're. I think you might be right because he's playing Patty now. But I think that's just to see what he brings. I think in the playoffs, you can see who they trust with three games already. You can see who they trust. I, I would. I would put the lawn because I. I prefer to lean defense in the playoffs. That's just me. I. I know, but I. I do. I. I think Spose in love. Honestly, with Patty, he loves veterans. He, he, he loves. He, he has the. Ethan, he has he the is, rejuvenator badge in 2K. Like, I'm not even bullshitting. He actually has that I, badge I, in 2K. I, I, like, I know. He just he 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 loves those he loves those bets. I think we should let Timmy. Timmy hasn't talked in a while. You should take the next two questions. <laughs> take the next two questions. 
So there are two questions up for Timmy, and then then I got to check on my daughter because I think she's watching South Park with the other Timmy in there. And I, 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 there you go, there you go. Um, oh boy, Donut Dad just threw this out there. Hold on a second. You want to let Timmy? You take this or Donut Dad? The Patty, the Patty thing. It's a horrible way to end the show. Horrible way. I I just get another one before the show. I just hope that Spoon learned his lesson, and after the. After like two games of he's like over there, just the sit spotty. Um, but I, I don't understand why we signed the lawn if he's just gonna watch. Is he is the lawn like the, the playoff killer? Like, is he the secret weapon? Because why is Patty starting next to Terry? I, I think it's because ago. they were trying to replicate. I think it's they're trying to replicate some shooting, honestly. I, I just think, but then in the process, he's fallen in love because Patty's in the right place, you know. It's just the right place was 2014, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so Spo gets like this on these vets, you know. Just you know, he brings a certain savvy, and and, and look, I, we enjoyed having Patty on the pod, but um, you know, it, it seems like they're a few years late on that one. I I you know? it, I would be playing the lawn because it, if you play the Cavs, you can you can. Put the lawn on guard. Oh no, no, for sure. I think the lawn is going to give one of those guards hell in the first round. I'm yeah. speaking, oh, don't like, don't get me wrong. He's still going to start a playoff game, right? Like at game three, he's going to start. The lawn, right, right. Like so, so, so I, yeah. right. So it's going to take Spo two games of Patty getting yeah. absolutely torched <laughs> by Spider or Garland to then start the lawn. The right, lawn, right? Let me, let me, over let me, let me. or under one and a half playoff starts. The long right over under one and a half playoff start. I'd say under, but I got a better question for you. I'll let you guys answer this, but then I guess we can close this thing up uh, because sure. Alice's computer can't take this long to put it on the podcast feed. I think we've already exceeded <laughs> exceeded the bandwidth limit. Talking about my internet, Breaking I'll throw this parts. out at you. Who, who plays more playoff minutes for the Heat this year? Ready? Uh-huh. Alondis Williams or Tyler Hero? Holy Alondis. Shit. Alondis. It better be Tyler Hero, but I'm. Mean, if... It might be a Londis. Oh, well, Wait, he can't, right? Because he's he can't, right? He's, uh, he's ineligible. All right, zero zero. It's a tie. Um, uh, will it be a tie? Will a Tyler Hero <laughs> or who else is who else is not a two way on the roster? It's Orlando. Uh, Orlando will play. Unfortunately, garbage time. Ideally, after a win, for the sake of you know everyone watching this. Oh, well, by the way, Thomas Ethan, meet. Yeah. Br- Brian and me have to say DeLon right because we transitioned our offseason take of Haywood Highsmith will be a starter for the playoffs. Yes. Uh, we transferred all that stock to DeLon right. Yes. Transferred it all. 100%. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I, Haywood Highsmith, cool experiment. I, I, I don't think he's uh, he's somebody. Wait, that... did Tony just disappear? I think that's our cue here. Uh, this has yeah. been fun, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for bringing us on. I, I do want to mention uh, for those of you who are listening to Floor is Yours for the first time, uh, typically Sean is in my spot, and I guess he'll be back with these guys next week. We try to put these up on the podcast feed. Uh, five on the floor, be back tomorrow. Um, Greg is back. And he's he's on a sabbatical. He's like on the I don't. He's like a heat player. He's on load management <laughs> for the last week. Uh, but Greg will be back uh, Friday. To handle some things, Alex Brady and myself will be at the game. Any closing thoughts, Brian or Timmy, before we get out of here? Yes, we'll be back next week. Um, Discord, off the floor, subscribe. Yes. We're always throwing stuff in there. And tomorrow, obviously, there's going to be a lot of game stuff. And follow follow us all individually also. It, it helps the business, especially mine, because, boy, I need numbers, apparently. All right, let's get out of here, Alex. <laughs> <laughs>